Okay, welcome back to the shop. Today I wanted to show you a very simple machine that I built recently um, to deeper and chamfer workpieces. Um, commercial available chamfering and deburring machines are crazy expensive. They are well around 1000 bucks uh, for a, a benchtop machine and they are I don't know why they are that expensive, but I built my own in about you know, four hours and it works almost as good as the commercial ones we have at work. And I will show you how it's built. I have no build video on this because I wanted to get it done and um, I will show it how it's built. So let's unplug it and take it apart. In fact, there is not much to take apart. Okay, what we have here is a router motor. You could also use the motor from a trim router or a um, or a Dremel tool or whatever you have. Um, but these Cress um, router motors with the 43 millimeter uh, collar here are super uh, super common here because people stuck them in their CNC router as a spindle and they are not that bad um, for a, normally they are used in a plunge base as a router but they are really pretty decent um, they have the speed on these ranges from 10,000 to 33,000 RPM and they have about a thousand watts. So they are plenty powerful and not super expensive. I think this motor costs about 150 bucks but if you use a, a super cheap router motor it will work as good as, as this one. I, I used this because I had it. Um, and then I made this attachment with a lot of chips in it. Um, this is all you need. It's a piece of round aluminum, 70 millimeter diameter and about uh, 90 millimeters long. I machined a big V-notch in here and I have a picture that shows you the setup on the milling machine. As you can see, I used a large shell and mill to hog out this, um, this V-notch. And then I cut, cut me uh, two strips of stainless steel that I screwed on there um, to provide protection against the aluminum because the aluminum tends to scratch and gall against your workpiece. The bottom side is just bored out to fit the collar of the router motor. That's uh, 43 millimeters, and up there there is clearance for the uh, collet nut. And of course, it's drilled through, so the end mill can reach through. Um, on the side, there is a port where the chips can be ejected. Or you could also uh, also made a, make an adapter for the um, shop vac. The router motor gets clamped by this by this locking ring. This is part of the body of this thing. I cut in with a slitting saw that direction and halfway around. So this portion here gets uh, clamped together with that single M6 screw. And then I machined a notch in the back and put that piece of flat bar in there so I can clamp it against the workbench. And that's all there is to it. Um, There is no super super complicated height adjustment. There is no nothing. You just drop in. Uh, make sure there are no chips on the clamping surfaces. You just drop in the router. 
which is a pretty tight fit and we want that. Then you push, uh, ah, I want to show you. Uh, I'm just using a straight 6mm carbide end mill, in that case a 6 flute. But before I tried a, a 2 flute and a 3 flute and they work uh, as good as that 6 flute. Um, You just push it up until the end mill reaches up into the V-notch here, into this V. And then you lock it in place and you're ready to go. Take it against the workbench, clamp it down, and now you can do your chamfering and deburring. Um, I have a piece of aluminum here, and we will do a test cut. Uh, yeah, this piece is not square, but we will try it anyway. Um, by sighting over the end mill against the workpiece from that direction. You can judge the, um, the width of your chamfer you're cutting, so, um, and of course you should do a test cut. And here you can see my chamfer. I just started a cut to see how far my how, how big my chamfer is. This looks good. Now we can proceed on. Super nice, pretty fast. Uh, chamfer without much hassle and no setup time. If you would do this on a milling machine, you can. You can use a um, deburring bit, a 90 degree single lip cutter, or a. You can even use a router bit, a carbide router bit, but it's always setup time. And with that machine clamped to your workbench, you're always ready to go. Just adjust the height of the end mill. Have a go. And always a nice clean chamfer, very consistent and very clean, and no very little secondary burr on the exits. Um, of course, this works not only with aluminum. This works also with plastic. I have a piece of peak here. Works also. It's a bit hard to show with the white delrin uh, to see the chamfer, but yeah, now you can see uh, it works pretty fast and quite, uh, pretty nice. Also, no problems with steel. Uh, I have a piece of cold rolled metal steel here. And as you can see, it leaves a pretty nice cut. It sounds horrible because your hand feeding into an end mill and uh, the 10,000 RPM low speed are on the higher end for carbide and steel. 
So expect that the end mill doesn't uh, last an eternity, but it's fast. It's just fast. Um, and when you do light or um, smaller chamfers, it's even faster. Uh, just at the depth of cut. Also very nice and I can see that it goes pretty fast when you uh, do a more light cut. That's just a nice deburring chamfer. This would even be good for um, chamfers, welding chamfers on thin structural tubing. And just to show you again the depth adjustment, you take your Allen key, you open the screw, and you turn it and you push. You push the, the router motor up and down and that is easier when you're turning it at the same time. Okay. And then you can do your cut. again super nice clean chamfer here so I think that's a pretty neat addition to the workshop and um, yeah four or five hours building yourself and you have a useful tool thank you for watching